This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you in part by Telex, the interconnection company, owners and operators of 56 Marietta, the most network-rich co-location facility in the southeast. Tag TV and Tag Radio. Technology now has a voice of innovation and information. Get it on www.tagtvonline.com. Global IT services. Offshore, nearshore, and on-site development centers. Product engineering and support services from comprehensive research and development services to IT solutions, including systems integration, information system outsourcing, package implementation, software application development, and maintenance services to corporations globally. The titans of outtasking and the future of IT consulting. Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, October 6, 2009, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. Global IT services are growing faster and with higher quality deliverables than ever before. Prevailing tough economic environments require businesses to reduce IT costs while making business ready for future growth. Up to the Tech Talk on Global IT is Saraj Prakash, Vice President, Global Delivery Organization for Wipro Technologies, Atlanta Development Center. Saraj has over a quarter century of IT experience and is instrumental in setting up Wipro's process quality consulting business in the U.S. He developed the global IT consulting giant's strategic blueprint for nearshore development and strategic relationships with local universities and business communities. As the company's VP, Process and Quality Consulting, he built a 375-member consulting group. Siraj implemented countless successful process improvement strategies for diverse IT clients in North America and in Europe managed training functions and established many innovations with launching of e-learning and blended learning programs, YPRO Academy of Software Excellence, business domain training for software engineers, streamlined campus introduction programs, and created large training infrastructure to meet future needs. YPRO IT Global Growth in 2010, planning for the future and a development center growing faster than expect, expected. Why Atlanta for this new initiative? It's Tech Talk on Global IT Consulting as we speak with WIPRO VP, Suraj Prakash. Suraj, welcome to Tech Talk. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you. Suraj, uh, obviously there's a lot to talk about, uh, great news as far as the company is concerned. Let's start maybe a little bit about, obviously there's drivers to opening a center in the United States, and maybe we'll cover a little bit about why Atlanta, but let's start with uh, what is the development center all about? Oh, well, uh, Wipro as a outsourcing giant has grown significantly out of work being done out of India. We've reached a stage where there is a significant demand for services to be done out of the U.S. The drivers for those are several. One is data security. The other is some of the government funds that are being spent. They necessarily need to be spent on U.S. soil with U.S. workers. So that is the second driver. And the third driver is really being good corporate citizens. We've grown to a particular size and scale, pretty much as the Japanese companies grew to a huge size and scale by importing their autos from Japan. There came a point in time where they had to get local and they set up local shop. So I think we are pretty much at the same stage where we have grown significantly, but we've come to a point where we need to be doing things out of the U.S. and generating jobs in the U.S. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that in a short span, We've created about 250 jobs in the last three, four months in an otherwise down economy. Oh, it's cool. all about getting local, doing work out of a local workforce, and doing those very jobs that cannot be done out of India. Well, that certainly is good news for, for Atlanta and for the greater economy. Let's talk a little bit about Atlanta. Uh, why did the company choose the Atlanta area? What brings you here? Well, there were several drivers that brought us to Atlanta. We did a due diligence where we went to different parts of the country, and we did a fair assessment as to what would be our best location. What we looked at was the manpower pool, and clearly Atlanta with its cluster of universities clearly 
stood out as compared to most other locations. The other location that came close was Dallas and Austin. The second driver was just the local hub of the Fortune 100 companies. Atlanta clearly stands out as a rich hub of companies which, which, are, which rank, rank, rank in the top list of the Fortune 100 and the Fortune 500. So that was the second. The third was, of course, it's a transportation hub. It's easy to fly in and fly out of Atlanta. And fourth, I think good weather. That did make a difference in our assessment. And it's, uh, it's, it's a great place to be in. And we've been very, very, and of course, the fifth being a well orchestrated effort by the government to make our entry into Atlanta very smooth and very easy. So all these factors went into us choosing Atlanta or other locations in the U.S. So, Rich, uh, let's talk a little bit about goals. Uh, certainly, you've got them pretty well defined, both in terms of the company in general and maybe specifically as far as U.S. operations are concerned. Can you give us some insight? Well, uh, there are several, several goals that the company has set for itself. And one is, of course, to be local and in the very geographies that it plays. It's no longer good enough to be working out of India and doing 80% or 90% of the work out of India and the rest out of client locations. So it's really setting up local capability, which is happening across the globe, not only in the U.S., but very strongly in, in Europe, as well as in the Middle East, as well as in the Chinese markets. So that's one, really to grow locally by hiring and delivering services out of a local talent pool. The other goal is, of course, to continue the growth momentum that we built. And uh, we see that going forward, we should be back to our 30-35% growth rates. And that uh, would be a challenge in many ways, but that's a goal that we've set for ourselves. And third is, we really need to leverage everything that goes by way of innovation, by way of increased productivity, by way of capturing mind share of our customers. And there we find that the U.S. universities are really the temples of learning and temples of innovation. And we have a very active play with the local universities here, in particular Georgia Tech. We've been very actively working with them, and in times to come, there should be a lot more action on that front. So those are very, very broad company goals. In terms of specifics, uh, we could spend a lot more time and, and deep dive into each one of those. Maybe a little bit more about Atlanta specifically. I mean, I know you mentioned uh, a uh, competitive analysis among a number of cities getting down to, uh, I believe you mentioned, was it Austin, Texas? Uh, and Dallas. And Dallas. Um, you yeah. know, I think in a lot of cases, Atlanta is always wondering, world class, and do we have the kind of knowledge-based uh, resources here that can support the kind of uh, technology that you're getting involved in or will be getting involved in? Talk a little bit about Atlanta specifically as you, as you see it. We find that there's a rich talent pool out here as far as the workforce is concerned, the talent that resides in Atlanta, we find that we find it to be very rich and very competent, so that's one. Second is the university system. I think there's a huge network of schools and colleges out here that are our source of uh, labor pool. We've hired from campuses, we've created a campus batch, and we believe that these campus recruits whom we have will become our senior managers in times to come. So that's the second. And the third is, I think Atlanta has been under-tapped by the technology companies. Mm. Most technology companies that work with Georgia Tech, the professors are forever flying to California and back. And we want to reverse that. We want to do all our innovation locally within Georgia Tech and within Atlanta so that we really leverage the talent that exists in, in, in the universities here. So those are some of the some of the initiatives, marquee initiatives that we are planning here. So 
Etheridge, uh, you know, with the volatility of, uh, of the uh, economy and, and the challenges on different opinions and different perspectives uh, as far as uh, where we are now and where we're going, you mentioned the stimulus package and some of the federal government funding. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your expectations for growth. Uh, what are you expecting for 2010? As a company, we expect that we'll be back to our 30% growth rate, and uh, we find that the economy is already on a rebound, and uh, the budgets that were all frozen and IT investments that were kind of put on the back burner are again coming to the fore, because that's the only way companies can get more productive, can be on the leading edge and provide America its, uh, its cutting-edge technology and to be ahead of competition. So I find that investments are back, may not be at the same rate, but surely it's picking up and by 2010 we, we expect a huge resurgence. So I expect the job market will hot up and we expect that there will be a lot more work to be done by the technology companies. So that's one. The second is contrary to our expectations, the Atlanta Development Center is growing leaps and bounds. To use an expression, it's growing gangbusters. We were expecting to be about 180 by the end of the year. We are already 250. We should be about 5 to 600 by the end of March 2010, which is the end of our fiscal. So that growth has been very robust, partly because of a latent demand that we were unable to fulfill, and partly a latent uh, and an emerging set of demands out of the stimulus package and government spending that is happening, and there is a pressure on some of these companies to actually do that work within the U.S. So in a down economy, we've been, we've been, we've been pleasantly surprised at the growth rates. One of the questions I guess you hear a lot about on the street that, uh, you know, in talking about the impact of digital technologies, the, uh, the, uh, now the proliferation of broadband connectivity, um, maybe talk a little bit in a pure play on technology, not to necessarily put you on the spot, but a lot of people are saying that the economy is going to come back, but it's going to be different. It won't be exactly the same because we'll be coming back that much more connected, that much more advanced in terms of the promise of these technologies. Could you give us maybe a, your opinion on that? Uh, yes. The, the use of technology would increase. So overall, I do see that the tech sector would, would play a much bigger role than it has in the past. And uh, so the, that, that, I think, that demand will be very robust. And as far as uh, the overall connectivity is concerned, uh, connectivity was already there, but I, I, I think going forward, the workplace will again be very distributed centralized offices had already disappeared or reduced significantly. Mm -hmm. and that trend, I think, will continue. And does it mean more outsourcing? Well, yes and no. Uh, I personally see that uh, there could be a significant demand for services within the U.S. Um, because the innovation, the quantum of innovation will go up. And as innovation goes up, you need to be more local to your marketplace. So that's, uh, some, that's a clear demand that we see. There will be a greater demand for designers, architects, and innovators. And all of that would be required here. The other trend that is there is that the Indian and the Chinese market itself are growing. So that may consume a lot of the India and the Chinese outsources, their bandwidth, so they may be all too focused in their local markets. So net-net, I see a huge growth spurt in 2010 as far as the technology business is concerned, and a lot of that would be required to be done within the U.S. One of the things I was reading recently where the uh, uh, Coca-Cola CEO had given a speech, he was talking about the new normal. They call it the equilibrium. He was talking about the world markets getting more equal. You mentioned India and China. He mentioned a couple of those. Um, we were talked a little bit about domestic U.S., and, and let's maybe keep a focus on that to a degree, but company-wide, uh, U.S. in particular, but what initiatives, if any, are you guys planning for the future? Uh, clearly, our, uh, 
we've done a lot of the doing when it came to technology. We aligned ourselves to what I would say is the American boardroom and did pretty much to make the boardroom successful. Now, starting 2010, or that, that trend is already visible, is there would be a pressure on Indian companies to be pretty much leading the marketplace, not only doing the doing by taking orders of what needs to be done, but by showing the way as to what can potentially be done. Mm -hmm. So there would be a lot more innovation coming out of the Indian companies, primarily because just doing the doing has has a limited scope and a limited, uh, what should I say, consumption. And the next next round of growth, not only for the India outsourcers, but for everybody else, including the IBMs and the Accentures would come out of innovation and applying technology to do things which were hitherto unthought of. Just as Coke has created vending machines where you can pretty much create your own Coke and all for 25 cents a pop. So you create your own experience, your own flavor, and pretty much what you'd like to do. And all of that gets stored so you can replicate that, and wherever you are, you can get your personalized. Suraj can get his Suraj Coke uh, wherever he is. So that's something that I think technology would intensely facilitate. Suraj Prakash, we've been uh, visiting with the Vice President of Global Delivery Operations of the Wipro uh, Atlanta Technology Center. Uh, Suraj, thank you so much for joining us today on Tech Talk. Thank you so much for this opportunity.